So this is a re recap of the functional component of cranial nerves, as we saw before, that it has got a sensory component and a motor component. Sensory component are also called afferent components, having somatic and visceral component. Somatic components, general somatic, special somatic, visceral, general visceral, and special visceral. Now let's see what are these co components. General somatic afferent, they carry general sensations and proprioceptive sensations from muscles and joints. Whereas general visceral afferent component, it carries general sensations from viscera. That means sensations like distension from the intestines or from the stomach. Special somatic afferent that carries special sensation like vision, hearing, equilibrium. Special visceral sensation, they carry sensation. They, they, they are special sensations from a nose, the smell, and the tongue, that is taste. So this is just a recap. Let's continue with our cranial nerves. We have seen the trochlear nerve. This is the trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal nerve is the fifth cranial nerve. It's got three branches. Ophthalmic branch that is passing through superior orbital fissure. Maxillary division that is passing through foramen rotentum. Mandibular nerve that is passing through foramen ovale. So these are some of the uh, branches or branches of trigeminal nerve and through which area it passes through. This is trigeminal nerve here, which is arising from the anterior aspect of the pons. So this is brainstem, where you can see part of medulla oblongata and pons. And I mentioned already that all the cranial nerves are arising from the ventral aspect. So what you can see here is the ventral aspect of medulla oblongata and the pons. And you can see a lot of cranial nerves which are arising from these areas. And this is the trigeminal nerve, which has got two roots or two parts, as you can see, a larger part, and the smaller part. Larger part represents the sensory part and smaller part that represents the motor part. A trigeminal nerve is uh, the fifth cranial nerve. What does it? Uh, is it a, a sensory nerve, motor nerve or a mixed nerve? What do you think? Both, sir. Both. Very good. Yeah, it's uh, both. It has got sensory component and motor component. But when you look at this, you can understand that it has got larger part that is sensory and smaller part that is motor. Okay, that you can understand from this uh, different roots. And it is major sensory nerve to the face region, not only face, head and neck region. It supplies this area. Okay. And it motor, it is motor to muscles of mastication. We have studied muscles of mastication. These muscles are supplied by the trigeminal nerve. A branches of trigeminal nerve. That is why you can see here it is a mixed cranial nerve, sensory and motor component. So this is what we have, we have seen that it has got three branches of thalamic division, maxillary division, and mandibular division, and it's a mixed cranial nerve. And this is showing different components, different nuclei that is located in the brainstem. So to remember nuclei are the collection of nerve cell bodies within the central nervous system. Okay, ganglia are collection of nerve cell bodies outside central nervous system. So that is the difference. So basically, structurally they are same, but depending on the location, the name changes from nuclei to ganglia. Now there are a lot of nuclei which you can see in this area, but we will be concentrating on to the trigeminal nerve nuclei, which is represented here as blue color. There are uh, four nucleus which are related to trigeminal nerve. Okay, that is mesencephalic nucleus, which is located in the midbrain, main sensory nucleus located almost in the pons, spinal nucleus, which is located in the middle oblongata, and another nuclei which uh, we will be seeing, not this actually. Uh, okay, uh, I'll talk about that later. So, uh, so all the blue things are not related to the trigeminal nerve. I'm sorry for that. But 
These nuclei are related to trigeminal now. As I mentioned now, mesencephaly nucleus, main sensory nucleus, and spinal nucleus. This is different. We'll talk about that later. But it has got one more nuclei, which is not shown in the picture. I think uh, we'll have to see it. Yeah, here it is. Look at this. This one. It is represented here as motor nucleus of trigeminal nerve. So whatever nucleus which is represented here, uh, the actually the color represents the sensory and uh, motor component. Okay. Anyway, so let's uh, talk about the trigeminal nerve nuclei. They are four in number. Mesencephalic nucleus located in the uh, midbrain. Main sensory nucleus in the pons. Spinal nucleus, which is there in the pons as well as in the middle of Langata. One more nucleus, which is associated with the trigeminal nuclei, trigeminal nerve, that is motor nucleus. So when you see here, when you look at this, there are three nucleus, which are sensory, which are sensory, which are taking the sensation from outside, right? It is receiving the sensations. Or in other words, you can say that there are collection of cell bodies, its peripheral processes are extending to the outer aspect and peripheral processes are getting sensations from head and neck region, face region, and it is relaying here. Okay, that is the meaning of it. But when I say motor nucleus, yes, motor nucleus is also related to the trigeminal nerve because when you look at the trigeminal nerve, you can see there are two roots, as you saw here, a larger sensory root and smaller motor root. Motor root. Sensory root is going to relay, relay into these different nucleus. Whereas motor nuclei will give rise to or the cell bodies of these the collection of cell bodies, right? There's no cell bodies. They send processes outside and that comes out as the motor component of the regimen now, which you can see here. This one. This is a smaller motor component and this is larger sensory component. So you have to think in that way, right? How the sensations are passing. Mm -hmm. So sensations from outside reaches here in this area, whereas from here, the impulses are going to move from here to the periphery for the muscles of mastication, as we just described, because this motor component is mainly going to supply some muscles, right? Some muscles. So when you look at the trigeminal nerve, you can see both the component, the motor component and the sensory component. That's the meaning of this slide. And of course, definitely you can see other nucleus as well. Uh, I can just tell you about some of the nucleus, not all here. Look at this trochlear nucleus. Trochlear nucle nucleus is related in the midbrain or it is in the midbrain. So the trochlear nerve that comes out from this nucleus. So this is how you should remember. You should know this is the, uh, you know, uh, this is the, uh, the structure of a cranial nerve, right? How it is located and how it is connected. Okay. So let's see. The trigeminal nerve has four nuclei. The main sensory nucleus that is located here, spinal nucleus, this one, it is very long nucleus, elongated nucleus, mesencephalic nucleus, which is located here in this area, and the motor nucleus is represented here. Okay, so remember, you have uh, the sensory nucleus on the left side as well as right side. You have the motor nucleus on the right side as well as, sensor, uh, as, well as left side. This is just to make you understand. Okay, don't think that you have only the sensory nucleus on the left side and motor nucleus on the right side. No, that is a misconcept. Okay. Both sides, we have nucleus. Sensory nucleus is present here, the left side as well as right side. Similarly, motor nucleus is present on the right and left side. This applies to all cranial nerves because cranial nerves are paired. It is not single structure, it is paired. So nucleus has to be present on right and left side. I hope that's clear, right? Yeah, the trigeminal nerve motor component. Now you might be knowing already what is the motor component of trigeminal nerve. Can somebody tell me what is the motor component? Have you seen any time the motor component of trigeminal nerve? Yeah, nobody has seen it. Okay, fine. Great. So it is arising from the masticatory nucleus. So masticatory nucleus is nothing but the motor nucleus. It is given another name. Okay, same it is. Okay, masticator nucleus or the motor nucleus is arising from that to muscles of mastication. Now, what are the muscles of mastication? We have temporalis muscle, masseter muscle, pterygoids, lateral pterygoid, medial pterygoid, both belong to muscles of mastication. So all these muscles are getting supplied from 
the trigeminal nerve from where it is exactly motor nucleus of trigeminal nerve it has nothing to nothing to do with sensory components okay it has nothing to do with sensory component that's it so uh, you know you can just imagine the trigeminal nerve trigeminal nerve as a big pipe big pipe uh, okay in that pipe you know you can see that the uh, water goes on one direction and the opposite direction so both the direction flow is possible okay usually you can you can imagine if you put a pipe if you just imagine if a imagine a pipe and a water is flowing it can uh, it can flow only single direction but when we say the cranial nerves you can just imagine in this way that the, there's, there's a pipe and which has water in that water can flow in both direction uh, you know away from the pipe towards the pipe or you know if you imagine one uh, point on the pipe and the water can flow in both the directions that is what you can see here in trigeminal right water component is going away from the uh, brain whereas sensory component is coming to the brain because it's take the sensation and reaches the brain so that is what you should uh, imagine and yeah not only masticatory muscles there are some other muscles which is uh, getting supply from the trigeminal nerve that is tensor villi palatine which is a muscle of you might have heard about tensor villi palatine uh, okay anyway uh, tensor tympani muscle tensor tympani muscle is uh, related in the middle ear tensor villi palatine is a muscle which is related to the uh, soft palate okay uh, there's another muscle mylohyoid 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 muscle we have already seen it Uh, suppose uh, i think you i think i think you remember the mylohyoid muscle i don't know whether you remember but here it is mylohyoid which is forming the floor of the mouth uh, i don't think it is you know required to explain muscles of mastication we have already seen it temporal muscle can be seen here and the medial trigoids and the lateral trigoid also can be seen here in this area then tensor villi palatine uh, i'm sorry it is not there the picture is not there not there and also tensor villi palatine that picture is also not there but uh these muscles we can see later okay uh, uh one more thing uh, anterior villi of digastric muscle digastric muscle is uh, is a muscle of you know which has two villi so the anterior villi is supplied by again the trigeminal nerve so these are the different muscles which uh, it supplies so the basically are coming from the motor nucleus and supplying muscles of mastication tensor villi palatine tensor tympani mylohyoid anterior villi of digastric Uh, whereas the sensory component uh, can be seen here so uh, you look at this diagram you can see that the trigeminal nerve after coming from the pons you can see here it is uh, dividing into three as you can see ophthalmic division uh, uh, then we have maxillary and mandibular division three divisions and uh, uh, these three divisions uh, they are basically uh, they are majorly sensory but uh, they have some motor component also along with that so these uh, cell bodies of sensory neurons in trigeminal ganglia now uh, when you see this you know uh, the the trigeminal nerve you know at the time of uh, bifurcation not bifurcation trifurcation right trifurcation you can see that there there is a you know enlargement enlargement in the trigeminal nerve that's called trigeminal ganglia trigeminal ganglia now trigeminal ganglion so uh, what is the definition of ganglion can somebody tell me okay no one knows about ganglion great so ganglion is a uh, you know ganglion is ganglion i'm not explaining again and again because you are supposed to know this now anyway so it contains uh, some of the uh, neurons these neurons are sensory neurons sensory neurons which are located in the trigeminal ganglion so they are sensory to face and anterior aspect of the scalp because you know posterior aspect of the scalp is supplied by you know uh, cervical spinal nerves conjunctiva and the eyeball region paranasal sinuses you can go back and see the paranasal sinuses the nerve supply nasal and oral cavities so you can see low larger areas you know anterior to third of the tongue is supplied by trigeminal nerve external surface of the eardrum duram of middle and anterior cranial fossa so duram matter of middle and anterior cranial fossa the sensations are carried by the trigeminal nerve so these are the areas where the sensory distribution of the trigeminal nerve reaches okay so they have collection of cell bodies inside the trigeminal nerve and that is called trigeminal ganglion they have 
distribution to all these areas. Now, if you want to know more about trigeminal nerve, you can go back and read about the divisions, the ophthalmic division, maxillary division, mandibular division, and you can read. The next nerve that we are going to see is the sixth cranial nerve, that is abducens, abducens nerve. And I explained uh, why the abducens nerve got this name. Can somebody tell me that? Yeah. What is that? Tell me. Sir, it abducts the rectus of eye. Very good, very good, very good. Who said that? Abina. Purti. Abina, right? Yeah, good. Right. So, Purti, sir. Eh? Who said this? Purti. Yes, Purti. Yeah, Purti. Okay, Purti. Great. Good. See, um, that's what. Uh, abducens nerve supplies lateral rectus muscle. Lateral rectus muscle is here. This is the lateral rectus muscle. And lateral rectus muscle, when it is acting, it causes abduction of the eyeball. That is why it is called abducens nerve. Okay. Anyway, look at this picture. You can see that uh, the abducens nerve origin. Look at this. It is originating from the junction between the pons and the middle arm blanketum, as you can see here. Right. So it is these cranial nerves are in order. Okay. They are in order. We will see that later if we have time. So this is the sixth cranial now. This is the fifth cranial now. Let, let me complete this, this area. This is the seventh cranial now. Seventh cranial now. If you look at the seventh cranial now, you can see clearly that there are two roots. That means it is a mixed now. It's a mixed now. Then you have vestibular. It doesn't mean that if you have more uh, than one root is uh, mixed now. But here, the seventh is mixed now. Vestibular cochlear now. Vestibular cochlear now. So these nerves can be seen in order sixth. 7th, 8th. So it's very easy to remember and easy to draw the diagram. Yep. So coming back to the nerve, abducens nerve is arising in this area. Now what happens after that? As you can see here, the abducens nerve that goes into the eyeball, into the orbit, through the superior orbital fissure, as you know, then it's supplying the lateral rectus muscle. Right? So that is a uh, only muscle which is supplied, uh, no, only muscle which is uh, innervated, innervating. Okay, only one muscle, right? So it enters the orbit through the superior orbital fissure. Lies on the medial aspect of lateral rectus. When you look at the, this is the right eye, uh, right eyeball, you're seeing from superior aspect. And you can see the nerve, the relation of nerve with the muscle. It is, nerve is medial to the muscle, as you can see there. And it innervates lateral rectus muscle of the eye. So only single muscle is getting innervated. So, uh, what do you think about like uh, abducens now? What does it? What does it? Is it a mixed, uh, more sensory motor? What do you think? Abducens. Motor now, sir. Yes, it's a motor now. It's it's purely motor now, right? You cannot say it is mixed now. It is a purely motor nerve. Yes. Vestibular cochlea. So before beginning this, let me ask you what type of nerve it is? Vestibular cochlea. What do you think? Sensory. Very good. Sensory. It is sensory. It is purely sensory now vestibular cochlea, which has got two components, vestibular component and cochlear component. So you may you may be knowing about the structure of inner ear. Uh, I'll just tell you uh, the basic of this. So I said that we have a vestibular component and cochlear component. Okay, both are together. Together you call it as vestibular cochlear nerve. And it is the eighth cranial nerve. Now look at that uh, origin of uh, vestibular cochlear. This here, right? Yeah, vestibular cochlear nerve. It's in this area between again pons and the middle arm blanketa. Now uh, in the inner ear, uh, you have got uh, something called labyrinth. Labyrinth. Okay, labyrinth. Uh, we'll talk about the labyrinth um, soon. So uh, basically, there are some structures uh, which are uh, you know responsible for your uh, hearing, okay, hearing, and also balance and the balance. Okay, so the vestibular component is for the balance, and the cochlear component is for hearing. Okay, vestibular component for the balance, and cochlear component is for hearing. Now. Uh, here you can see that there's something called cochlea, cochlea, which is responsible for 
the hearing process okay and there are something called semicircular canals and the utricle which are related to the balance the balance so here you can see that there are nerves which are going to the uh, vestibular component that is responsible for the balance balance of the body similarly there are other component that goes to the cochlea that is for the hearing okay so both the nerves reaches in the brain stem and together they are called as vestibulo cochlear nerve that you can see here anyway so uh, you can better understand when we see the uh, structure of ear so it leaves the cranial cavity via internal acoustic meatus so it is going to leave the uh, ear uh, i'm sorry the cranial cavity via internal acoustic meatus which is an opening into the uh, inner ear actually okay internal acoustic meatus the external acoustic meatus is placed outside internal acoustic meatus is placed inside you can just go back and see about the posterior cranial fossa you can see this uh, internal acoustic meatus there and it's accompanied by facial nerve so in the internal acoustic meatus the facial nerve and the vestibular cochlea nerve they goes together because facial nerve is also going to uh, part of internal ear and also the middle ear facial nerve okay whereas the vestibular cochlea nerve that goes into the internal ear but both has to pass through internal acoustic meatus so two component or del component that is cochlear component they are uh, the cell bodies of it okay the beginning of it they are seen in the spiral ganglion of cochlea so there are something called ganglion a collection of cell bodies they are the cochlea and they are the beginning of uh, you know that's the beginning of the cochlear component of the vestibular cochlear nerve similarly the function is hearing as we know so here the uh, vestibular cochlear nerve the cochlear component is dealt with so you have the uh, function as hearing the cell bodies are placed in the spiral ganglion of cochlea we will see about that in coming slides now the vestibular component of it now look at this this picture you can see here there are three parts of the ear where you can see the styloid process right in this area and external ear the middle ear and the internal ear internal ear has the cochlea right the semicircular canals and the vestibule right look at the uh, cranial nerves here the rest, this is internal acoustic meatus and this one right you can see two nerves are coming inside the uh, facial nerve and the vestibular cochlea nerve you can see that the cochlear component goes to the cochlea the vestibular component that goes to these end organs so when you look at the vestibular component the cell bodies are placed in the vestibular ganglion there are something called as vestibular ganglion which are located in this area they are nothing but the collection of cell bodies so they send the peripheral processes into the uh, receptors or into the you know into the structures uh, from receptors for balance and equilibrium this is for balance and equilibrium so when you walk you you know when you stand when you sit in any position a balance is required body has the body needs a balance right that is done by uh, this uh, this nerve so you might have seen people who have some ear issues they uh, slowly they may lose the balance okay this is because of this right it can be due to many reasons okay the functions balance and the next cranial nerve uh, we are jumping from uh, uh, one cranial to other because uh, you know in between there are some cranial nerves which we are uh, exempting it now because we will be dealing with that uh, when we see the uh, you know parasympathetic outflow okay, because we have seen there are three nerve four nerves that is third um, seventh isn't it uh, and the ninth tenth yeah ninth or tenth so these nerves we are not seeing now because we will be seeing it last they are carrying the parasympathetic uh, system parasympathetic fibers anyway so we are skipping that in between the next nerve that is spinal axillary nerve the spinal axillary nerve uh, it is very uh, interesting now it's very you know um, nice to talk about this nerve spinal axillary uh, all the cranial nerves are good but this, uh, this is uh, you know interesting i'll i'll tell you why it is interesting yeah so this is the 11th cranial nerve 11th cranial nerve look at this uh, let's find out the uh, spinal axillary in this as you can see here this is the uh, accessory nerve this is the axillary nerve you can see here it is arising from the middle of lungata as you can see here uh, <clears throat> but the axillary nerve has got two components in fact okay there are two components uh, a cranial component which you can see here and a spinal component okay cranial component which is arising from the middle of lungata 
spinal component which is arising from the spinal cord. This you can see here, this very clearly. So this is the uh, middle of Langata and you can see it is continuing as the spinal cord. Now you can see the spinal nerve also arising from it. Anyway, let's see this picture here. This is the cranial component of the spinal axillary and this is the spinal component which is marked as red color here. A red color as you can see there. So there are other nerves, you don't have to think about now other things. Please concentrate on this area. This is the cranial component and this is the spinal component of spinal axillary nerve. So basically it has got two components, cranial component and spinal component. Let's see about that. And there's one more thing that you should note here is that this is the uh, this is the nerve which is called the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve. Okay, look at this. It is marked here as yeah, correct, marked clearly, clearly axillary nerve here. Fine. So cranial and spinal component of axillary nerve. And look at this nerve. This is called the vagus nerve, the tenth cranial nerve. Tenth cranial nerve. Look at the relation of the uh, vagus nerve with the spinal axillary nerve. They're very close with each other. Very close with each other, right? And if you look at carefully, you can see one more thing here. That is the cranial component of the spinal axillary nerve. The spinal component of the spinal axillary nerve. They both reaches and they are entering into the spinal axillary nerve. Right? Now look at this cranial component, spinal component. They both are entering into the cranial nerve. That is the 11th cranial nerve. But it is continuing laterally. It is passing out through the jugular foramen, but when it does so, we can see that here one component of it that goes into the vagus nerve, as you can see here. It is going into the vagus nerve. That means when the cranial nerve 11 that is coming out from the jugular foramen, it carries only the spinal component, not the cranial component. Cranial component, yes, it had a cranial component, agreed but not to much extent, only a few extent. After that, it is going into the, the cranial nerve 10, that is vagus now. Did you get what I said now? Did you get me? Okay, I can repeat that once again. There are two parts of the spinal axillary now, as I said before, that it has got cranial component and, sensor, and uh, spinal component. Cranial component and spinal component, they both enter into the 